God loves today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. Turn with me in your Bible today to Romans the 8th chapter. Romans the 8th chapter. And I want to talk to you about a subject this morning that I can't explain to you because I don't understand. Alright. Come on. Preach. Hallelujah. I bet you've never heard a preacher say that as he started his sermon. The subject today is one that I cannot explain. I cannot grasp it, but I accept it. All Hallelujah. Right. I want to talk to you this morning about God's love. Amen. Romans the 8th chapter and the 35th verse. And we find the Apostle Paul here. There were times that the Apostle Paul yeah. got out the belt and took it to the woodshed. Amen. Come on. <laughs> there were times he preached it pretty hard. <clears throat> But you'll find in these verses, these passages of Scripture here, Paul is trying to comfort God's people. Letting them know that through the trials and through the tribulations and through the rough times that they're going through, that God still loved them. Amen. Paul asked this question, and I'm in Romans 8 and 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. If we ever lived in a day, and Brother David said something along these lines, but if we ever lived in a day where people needed to know about the love of God, it's today. Amen. If people ever needed to hear about God's love, it's today. Because as we see in our society, the love of many is waxing cold. Amen? Come on. As days go by, as time goes on, uh -huh. we see love becoming less and less a part of our society. Come on, brother. Preach. Real love. I'm talking about yeah. true love. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm talking about the kind of love where you love your neighbor as yourself. Come on, brother. I'm talking about the kind of love on, that brings man. a man and a woman together as teenagers yeah. And 60 years later, they're still holding hands. Amen? Right. I'm talking about the kind of love that God brings. Come on, preach. The kind of love that this nation was built upon because it was built upon the God of love. Yeah. Amen? The Bible says that God is love. Yes, Amen? Sir. So Paul's asking this question, and if I ask the majority of people today, do you believe that God loves you? I think that the largest percentage would probably say yeah. There would be those that would say no. Right. I've heard that throughout my years of ministry. I don't believe God loves me. Mm. I don't believe God cares anything about me. Mm. You would tell them that God loves them and it's like water running off a duck's back. Amen? Yeah. God loves you. I don't believe that. God cares about you. I don't believe that. Because of the circumstances and the situation that they were in or what they were going through. And even for the staunchest of believers, there are times in your walk that things that are happening in your life causes the enemy to whisper to you and say, Now do you think God loves you? Yeah. Come on. Amen. Come on. Even those that are strong believers have struggled with this because of things that they have went through, they have questioned God's love. Wondering if this thing that has been brought up on their, that has came up on them, wondering if this thing is going to kill them or not. All right. And wondering where God is at in all of this. Mm -hmm. Have you ever wondered that today? Yeah. Have you ever been in the midst of a storm and wondered where God's at? Come on. Have you ever been through a trial or a, or a tribulation or a time of turmoil? And Brother David, you just wondered, where's God? That's right. Why did he allow this to happen? Amen. Why is this going on? Say, oh, Brother Billy. Come on. You shouldn't have those kind of questions. If you don't, then you're a robot. All right. Because we are all human. Exactly. There are times that we wonder. Now, I'm not saying we turn away from God. Uh -huh. But there are times I've questioned God before. Amen. If I'm wrong in that, I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. But there's times when I've said, God, I don't understand it. Why did this happen? Amen. Amen. Right. And that, that's one of the things that causes people to question the love of God. 
Yes. But Paul is addressing it here. He says, who shall? Or you can say what shall? Because some of the things that he's fixing to talk to us about are not people, but there are things. Come on. Situations and different things that go on in people's lives. <laughs> who shall separate us from the love of Christ? All right. Then he names off some things. See if you can relate to some of this. Shall tribulation? Now, what's he say? Shall tribulation separate us from the love of Christ? Then he says, distress. Shall distress separate us from the love of Christ? Shall persecution separate us from the love of Christ? How about famine? Or nakedness? Or peril? Or sword? He brings it all the way down. He starts out with tribulation. Then he talks about distress. He brings it all the way down to sword, which he's talking about death. Because the next verse he says, as it is written, and he's quoting from Psalms 44 and 22, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, we are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Talking of those that had died in the faith before. Those of the Old Testament that had laid down their life for the cause of Christ. Those for the cause of God. Amen. And those in the New Testament that had laid down their life for the cause of Christ. Because then the revelation of God in the flesh had came and dwelt among us. Amen. They're talking about Stephen. Right. Paul saw Stephen stoned to death. Right. Yet in the face of death, Paul had realized... That, that death, those stones, the hatred of those people still had not separated Stephen from the love of God. Come on, Stephen, as he died, said he looked up into heaven and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Amen? Standing at the right hand of God. And as Stephen died, he said, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. Amen? We're talking about love today. Yes, sir. We're not talking about I love you today, I hate you tomorrow. Come on. We're not talking about some classroom crush. Amen. We're talking about love yeah. that knows no bounds today. Come on, preach. Boundless love. Come on, preach. So Paul, he's addressing death. And he's telling us that even death cannot separate us yeah. from the love of God. Right. You see, it wouldn't be long before... Paul would make the walk to Nero's shop block. Right. Even Nero's shop block as Paul would lay his head down yeah. to give his life for the cause of this Christ that he hated for so long. Come on. Come on, break. Even death could not separate him right. from the love of Christ. Amen? So tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. Even death cannot separate you from the love of God. Just as Nero's chop block could not separate Paul from this great love. And he knew it, Brother Dave. And we need to know it today. And Paul was wanting us to know it today when he said, Who? What things shall separate us from the love of Christ? Amen. Persecution? <laughs> perils? Distress? Death? All these things that Paul is naming off. Things that people have faced. Yes. Shall these things separate you from the love of God? And he would answer his own question yeah. whenever he would say, Nay! Yeah. Verse 37, nay, in all these things. In Kentucky language, no, amen. Come on. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors yeah. through Him that loved us. Amen. Through all of what things? Through tribulation, we are more than conquerors. Through distress, we are more than conquerors. Through persecution, we are more than conquerors. Through famine, we are more than conquerors. Through nakedness, we are more than conquerors. Through peril, we are more than conquerors. Through death, we are more than conquerors today. None of these things can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. None of these things. Yes, sir. Can separate you. Amen. I don't understand it. All right. <laughs> God loves me. Yes. I don't understand it. I can't explain it to you today. All 
Brother David, I can't get my old carnal mind to wrap itself around the idea that an all holy and all righteous and all and God Almighty, Almighty God would give His life Amen. for me. Yes, sir. Most of the time, I wouldn't give myself the time of day. I think He ain't worth it. All right. Oh, but God saw something in mankind yeah. that He loved. <laughs> I don't understand it today. I can't explain it today. Oh, but I accept it. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to be able to explain it. See, we think we got to be able to explain everything. Yeah. And if we can't explain everything, it shows that we're dumb or something or we're just not as spiritual as other people. Well, this preacher don't care to tell you that I cannot explain everything. And God's love is at the top of the list. I can't explain it. Right. I don't understand it. I cannot grasp it. Yeah. Ephesians 3 and 19 says, And to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge. Amen? Amen. Come on. That God was so mindful of man yeah. that He would pay such a great price for mankind. Yeah. If you, if you understand that, I wish you'd explain it to me because I don't understand it. When I look at the world today as it is, the shape that it's in, let's bring it down to our nation. Amen. I live here. I can talk about this place. Yeah. When you look at our nation that condones homosexuality, which God condemns. Right. When you look at our nation that condones abortion, oh, come on. which God condemns. Come on, tell it. When you look at the sin and the willfulness, pride of mankind, yeah. it causes you to wonder why God just doesn't wipe it all off the face of the earth. And I can tell you why, but I don't understand it. Because of His love for mankind. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. That's right. I can't explain it. I don't understand it. I can't grasp it today. Come on. 1 John 3 and 1 says, Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Did you hear that? Yeah. What manner of love the Father... I don't, I don't, I don't believe Paul understood it. All right. Amen? Amen? You tell me how a man that persecuted the church right. put Christians to death. Yeah could ever understand the love of a God that would forgive that. Amen. I don't believe it's in our, our capacity as a human being to understand the love. You know why? Because most of the time, my love for you depends upon how you treat me. All right. It depends upon your love for me. Yeah. How many people can honestly say it's easy for you to love everybody? It's not easy for you to love everybody. <laughs> But God loves everybody. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. God loves everybody. Yes, He does. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us. I don't understand it. Amen. I can't grasp it. I can't get a hold of it. Right. But I accept it today. Amen. Frederick, Frederick M. Lehman in 1917 wrote these words. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. It goes, it, 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 the, the guilty pair bowed down with care. God gave His Son to win. Yeah. His erring child He reconciled and pardoned from His sin. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels song. The last verse of that song that I'm fixing to read to you was found written on the wall of a narrow room in an insane asylum after they had carried the man that had lived in that room who was demented, who they thought had lost his mind. After they carried him to his grave and buried him, they went back to his room to clean it out and they found these words inscribed on the wall. Could we with ink the ocean fill and were the skies of parchment made? Were every stalk on earth a quill and every man a scribe by trade? 
To write the love of God above would drain the ocean dry. Nor could, nor could the scroll contain the whole, though stretched from sky to sky. The love of God. Amen. No one can understand it. Paul would go on to say in verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him that loved us. Yeah. Verse 38, he said, For I am persuaded that neither death... Oh, are you staying with me this morning? Amen. For I am persuaded that neither death nor life... Oh, that's how you can lay on your deathbed. Right. That's how you can walk into the room of a little old saint of God yeah. on her deathbed, Amen. struggling to take her next breath. And see peace. Amen. Amen. Oh, she she don't have to understand it. Right. She don't have to be able to explain it to you. Come on. She just has to accept it. Right. That God's love through Christ Jesus Amen. cannot be separated from you. You cannot be separated from that, even in death. Amen. Paul said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life yeah. nor angels. Do you hear that? Amen. Life can't do it. That's right. Life happens. Amen. That's right. But life cannot separate us from the love of Christ. True. Nor angels. There's not an there's not an angel in hell in uh, heaven. There's not an angel in heaven. Right. There's not one from hell either. But Amen. That has the power to take you out of God's hand. Amen. Amen. Fire. He won't, God won't force you to stay right. in His hand. Come on. You can walk away, but if you do so, you do so by choosing to do so yes, and not being able to point the finger at anybody or anything else. Amen. Amen. That's true. Even then, God still loves you. Amen. Right. You can walk away from Him and go get in the hog pen. Right. But God still loves you. You can waste your life, spend everything you got on righteous living, but God still loves you. Amen. You can die and split hell wide open. Right. And nothing grieves the heart of God more. Amen. Because He loves you. That's right. Amen. True. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities. Mm -hmm. Talking about powers of darkness. Amen. Right. The devil can't do it. Right. Amen. Come on. Nor powers, nor things present, meaning whatever happens today, mm -hmm. can't do it. Nor things to come. Brother David, as bad as tomorrow may be. Yeah. We don't none of us know what we face tomorrow. Amen. But no matter how bad it seems, yeah. there's nothing, nothing, nothing that can separate you from the love of Christ. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. Nothing can cause God to stop loving you. That's right, brother. Amen. True. That's true. Nothing. Then he goes on to say, he's not done yet. You'd think, well, he's covered it all. No, not yet. No. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Right. You see, you have been bought today with such great a price. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Do you really think that after God paid such a price for you, after Jesus paid such a price for you, do you really think that He's going to give up on you now? <laughs> Amen. Do you really think He's going to quit loving you? I know this is a pitiful example, but if you went out today and you bought what was considered a priceless treasure, if you spent everything you had to buy, whatever this was, antique or whatever, would you not watch over that? Would you not protect that? Would you not think, I've given everything I have for this. I'm not going to let go of it. Yeah. I'm not going to let somebody destroy it. Come on. I'm not let go, I'm going to let somebody steal it. Amen? Come on. You have been bought today with a price far greater than rubies, yeah. far greater than gold, Amen. far greater than money. And God has no intention, well, 
Even though I paid such a price. Come on. I'm just going to forget about them. Come on. No, 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 no. None of these things. None of these things. Nay. None of these things can separate us from the love of God in Christ right. Jesus today. Amen. 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 We've been bought with a price. A great price today. Amen. Amen. Yeah. The love of God which is in Christ Jesus. And back up with me. We're still in Romans the 8th chapter. And I'm not going to hold you all day. Romans the 8th chapter. Back up to verse 31. And Paul shows us the price that was paid. He explains to us why we cannot be separated from the love of God. All right. He lets us know that God has invested in mankind so much that He will not just walk away. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Oh, my, my, my. Aren't you glad today that God won't ever walk away? Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? All right. Stay with me. Here's the price. Here's the price. Here's the price. Verse 32. He that, he that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall He not with Him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Yeah. It is God that justifieth. I almost came out of my skin when I read that. Right. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Yeah. Next time the devil goes talking to you, yeah. talk back and say, Who do you think you are anyway, devil? I'm a child of the king. I don't belong to me. I've been born with a prize. You can't have me. You cannot separate me from the love of God in Christ Amen. Jesus. Amen. Absolutely. First Timothy 2 and 6 is talking about Jesus who gave Himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. To be testified in due time. Alright. He gave Himself a ransom. Y'all know what ransom means. In the day and age that we live in, you hear it on the news or you see it on your TV show or whatever, however it is you see it. Somebody kidnaps somebody. Right. And it says, you can have them back, but we want this much money. All right. You cannot have them back unless you pay this price. Come on. That's the kind of condition mankind was in. All right. Mankind right. could not be reconciled and brought back to God but by one price being paid. Oh, my Lord and my God. And God loved us enough. The Father loved us enough. Praise God. The Son loved us enough to pay the price and buy us back. And now we are not our own. And if you think that after He has invested everything, the best that He had, if you think that after He made that investment in you, He's going to walk away, wow. you are mistaken today. Wow. 1 Corinthians 6 and 20 and 1 Corinthians 7 and 23 both say we are bought with a price. We are bought with a price. <laughs> oh, I wish I could understand it today. I wish I could get my mind around it and figure out why God loves me. But see, when I go to inspecting me and trying to figure out, well, let's see, what is there about me that God loves? Yeah. The only thing I come away with, Brother David, is scratching my head and wondering even more, why does He love me? All right. Why does He love me? Come on. Amen? Come on. Praise God. I would have threw me out a long time ago. I don't understand His love. I can't grasp His love today. But I accept it. I accept it. I embrace it. Amen. I rely on it. I trust it. Right. You out there today listening to my radio, you out there watching the video, mm -hmm. you don't have to understand it. Come on. All you have to do is accept it. Amen. That God loved you so much yes. that He gave everything that He had right. in order for you not to go to hell. Amen. I don't know how you can preach on God's love without reading the Scripture here. Amen. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. For God so loved that He gave His only Son. The Son so loved that He gave His life. You honestly think today that He would go through all of the, the torture that He went through? That He would walk the Via Della Rosa? That He would stand at the whipping post? That He would take the crown of thorns in His head? That He would walk up the hill of Golgotha and lay down His life and, ta wow. and, and take on one of the most excruciating deaths possible? You think He would do all of that? And then just at the drop of the hat, He would say, well, you know what? I'm tired of old David Fincher, so I just ain't going to have no more to do with it. I don't love him no more. Huh. How many times you heard somebody say, I don't believe this. After all we've been through, and you don't love me, you ain't going to find that with God. Amen. 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 After all you've been through, you still going to... When you go through persecution, you're still going to find that God loves you. When you go through tribulation, you're still going to find that God loves you. When you're in hell, David said, if I make my bed in hell, He's there. Amen. Yeah. You'll find yourself in hell. And one of the... One of the Torments will be the fact that you know that God loved me and He didn't want this for me, but I chose to walk away from Him. Amen. Amen. Exactly. Oh, for God so loved. I don't understand why God would give His Son. I don't understand why the Son would give His life. It's beyond my human understanding. I know I keep saying that, but it's the truth. Amen. I can't grasp it. I can't understand such love. Amen. There's a recitation that they play on the radio, I think mostly during Christmas time, but I want to read it to you today that sums it up pretty good. In the streets of Chicago one cold winter's evening, a little boy was selling newspapers on the corner. The little boy was cold and he was hungry. And he walked up to a policeman and he asked, he said, Mister, would you happen to know where a little boy could find a warm place to sleep? You see, I've been sleeping in a cardboard box down the street and it sure is awful cold tonight. Sure would be nice to have a warm place to sleep. The policeman looked down at the little boy and he said, go down to the street, go down the street into that big white house down there on the corner. <coughs> Knock on the door and when the lady comes to the door, just tell her John 3.16 and she'll let you in. Right. So the little boy walked down the street and he walked up the steps to the big house and the lady opened the door and he looked up at her and he said, John 3.16 and the lady said, come on in, son. Praise the Lord. She took him in and sat him down in, in a big old rocking chair right in front of the uh, fireplace. And mm. The boy sat there for a while and Brother Rodney, he thought to himself, John 3.16, I don't understand it. But it sure does make a cold boy warm. All right. Later she came back and she asked him, was he hungry? He said, well, I haven't eaten in a couple days. I could stand a bite to eat. So the lady took him into the kitchen, Brother Dave. She set him down at the kitchen table just full of food. Yeah. And he ate and he ate. Never had been so full in his life. And as he sat there, he thought to himself, John 3.16, I sure don't understand it. Mm. But it sure makes a hungry boy full. Amen. After that, she took him upstairs and she took him into the bathroom and there was a big tub of warm water and he got in there and he took him a bath and as he sat there, he thought, John 3.16, I don't understand it, but it sure does make a dirty boy clean. All right. The lady came in later and she got him, she took him to a bedroom and there was a big feather bed there and she tucked him in and she covered him up and she kissed him on the forehead and she walked out of the room. And as he lay there in the darkness looking out the window at the snow as it fell to the ground, he thought to himself, John 3.16, I don't understand it. Right. But it sure makes a tired boy rested. Amen. The next morning the lady came up and she took him down to the same kitchen and there was the table full of breakfast food and he ate and got full. And afterwards she took him to the rocking chair where she had first set him in there in front of the big fireplace. She took the Bible down off the mantel and she sat down on the floor in front of him and she said, Son, do you understand what John 3.16 means? He replied, No, ma'am. The first time I ever heard it is whenever the policeman told me last night to come up here and tell you. 
She opened the Bible to John 3.16 and she began to explain to him about Jesus. And right there in front of the fireplace in that rocking chair, he gave his heart and his life to Jesus Christ. Amen. And as he sat there, Brother David, he thought, John 3.16, I don't understand it. But it sure makes a lost boy feel safe. Amen. Well, I want to confess something to you today, church. I don't understand it either. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Praise God. I don't understand it either. Amen. I don't understand how God was willing to give His Son to die for me. Yeah. I don't understand how Jesus was willing to go through what He went through yeah. for me. Amen. Yeah. I don't understand the agony of the Father and the angels as they watched. I don't understand the agony of Christ as He hung on the cross and He, and he gave up His life for me. I don't understand the intense love for me that Jesus had that He would go to the cross. John 3.16 I don't understand it, but it sure does make life worth living. Yes. Amen. Amen. No matter who you are or what you've done, there is room at the cross for you. Amen. There is mercy to be found for you. There is grace to be found for you. For God so loved the world. That includes the Muslims. Yes. You may have rejected Him. You may have denied Him. You may have killed in the name of a false God. But God still loves you. Yes. And if you'll turn to Him in faith believing in Jesus Christ, He will save you. I told you this before, and I know it's controversial. But Mother Teresa, as full of humility as she was, as full of love as she was, as kind as she was, if she didn't accept Jesus, if she didn't accept this love that can only be accepted through putting your faith in Jesus Christ yeah. as Lord and Savior, if she didn't accept Him, as good of a woman as she was, she still went to hell. Because there's only one way to get there. Amen. <clears throat> Charles Manson or one of the other crazy killers on death row, right. as bad as a lifestyle as they lived, as much harm as they caused, if while on death row, they will get out on their knees and ask God to forgive them, He still loves them. Amen. Amen. He will save them if they put their faith in Jesus Christ. So wherever you're at, whatever you've done, there are people that listen to this program, that listen to these sermons mm -hmm. in prison, in jail. Right. And you're sitting there and you don't think anybody loves you. This preacher's telling you today that Jesus loves you. Amen. Even those bars cannot separate you from the love of God that is oh, in Christ Jesus. Amen. Death can't separate you. Right. Prison can't separate you. Right. Solitaire can't separate Come you. On. Come on, preach. God loves you. So much yeah. that He gave His life. So if you're out there and you're a prostitute, God still loves you. If you're an alcoholic, God loves you. Amen. God doesn't love me any more than He loves you. Right. He loves us all. He's no respecter of person. Right. Amen. Right. I can't stand here today and say, God loves me more. No, 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 no. God loves all of us. Amen. Amen. True. If you're a prostitute, if you're an alcoholic, if you're a drug addict, if you're a murderer, if you're an adulterer, if you're a rapist, if you're a man or woman on death row, God loves you. All right. We find in the prodigal son, as good a picture as any, the son went to the father and said, give me what's mine. But one thing, that's an insult. He wasn't even supposed to get it until the father passed away. So in other words, he's saying, you're dead to me, old man. Give me my money. Think about that for a minute. Some people have walked away from God and have considered Him dead to them. So what's He do? He goes out and He spends all of that money, all of His inheritance. He finds some good time friends to drink it up with. To yeah. booze it up with. Finds Him some nighttime ladies to enjoy pleasures of sin for a season. Yeah. And He finds Himself completely broke and of course all of His friends are gone then. Right. Money don't buy a lot of things but it can buy friends. Amen. Until you run out of money. Amen. So he wakes up in the hog pen. And he comes to himself and he thinks, I'm going to go back to the Father's house. Right. He gets up and he goes back and he doesn't find a judgmental, critical old man. 
No, the Bible says the Father sees him coming. <laughs> right. Thank God. Must have been watching for him, Brother David. Amen. Right. Amen. God loves you so much, even when you walk away, he'll still keep watching to see if you turn around and come back. Oh, he'll still keep watching to see if you turn around and come back home. Amen. Do you understand it, Brother Billy? No, I don't understand it. I'd have been mad. I'd have said, where's my money? Sure, you come back now that you spent all your inheritance. But God didn't. The Father didn't. This picture of God didn't. Come on. The Bible says He ran down and He hugged Him and put His arms around Him. Yeah. He said, my son that was dead, now he's alive, he was lost. But now he's found. Whew. Amen. Do I understand it? No, I don't understand it. <laughs> but John 3.16, Brother Tyler, I don't understand it, but it sure does make this old lost boy found. Amen. It sure does make this old dead man alive again. Hallelujah. It sure can clean up a drunk. It sure can deliver a drug addict. Amen. It sure can deliver a homosexual. Amen. God loves you. Yes, hallelujah. Nothing can separate us from the love of God hallelujah. that is in Christ Jesus. Praise your holy name. I'm trying to hurry. Okay. If you die lost and go to hell, it will not be because God does not love you. Come on, praise It will be because you rejected God's love. Right. Amen? Amen. Let me say that again. If you die and go to hell, it will not be because God did not love you. Come on, preach. It will be because you rejected the love that God offered. That's right. I don't understand it today, but I know that it's fully accessible, accessible to anyone who will turn to Him in faith believing. Right. Whosoever will, let him come and drink of the water of life freely. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. Turn with me to Romans 5 and then close on with this scripture. Romans the 5th chapter. I would stand here today and say, well, I hope that I've explained it to you. But I can't really explain it to you. I can't really get up here this morning and explain to you this subject because I don't know anyone who can. All I know is to tell you to accept it. To embrace God's love for you. A love that even death cannot separate you from. Oh, isn't that wonderful today? Amen. Amen. Romans 5 and 1. Therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith unto His grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And not, only, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. If you think today you have to get good enough, listen to these words. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. Did you hear that? Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare die. But he's talking about Jesus who died for the ungodly. Amen? Right. Verse 8. But God... <laughs> See, I don't understand it. But God. I was lost. But God. There was no hope for me. But God. Amen. Oh, I was ungodly. Come on. Still am without Him. All right. Amen. If you took Jesus out of my life, don't tell me what kind of drunk I'd be. Amen. Right. I'm probably following Daddy's footsteps today. All right. But God. Uh -huh. Oh, aren't you, aren't you glad today? But God. Brother David Fentress would have been defeated, but God. Amen. He would have been lost, but God. Right. He would have died on the way over here this morning and get a car wreck, but God. Amen. Amen. God. What does it say? But God com commendeth His love toward us yeah. in that while we were yet sinners, on, Christ died for us. Right. Oh, my. I don't understand why God loves me. I can't grasp it, but I accept it today.
today. I rest in it. I walk in it. I trust in it. Glory to God. And one day I'll cross over Jordan and enter inside the gates. I still maybe I'll understand it then. Maybe we'll know all things then. But until then, I just gotta trust that he saw something in me. That somehow, some way, he felt like it was worth investing in me. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing shall separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Aren't you glad today, Brother Tyler, yes. for John 3.16? Amen. I don't understand it, but it sure does make life worth living. So thankful for the love of God today. Amen. For the price that Jesus paid. And if you're out there under the sound of my voice and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and you think that you have done far too terrible things to ever be forgiven, let me assure you today that while we were all sinners, while we were all ungodly, while we were all lost and undone, Christ died for us. And there's no sin that you do that can separate you from that love. He loves Amen. you. He loves you. And if you'll turn to Him today in faith believing, and call out upon the name of Jesus and put your trust in Him, He will save you, deliver you, and set you free and give you eternal life. Because nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You may be eaten up with AIDS today, but AIDS cannot separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. You may be a homosexual today. Homosexuality cannot separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You will not go to God and God turn you away because you're a homosexual. No, He'll save you. He'll cleanse you. He'll straighten you up. He'll deliver you from that spirit and He'll make life worth living again. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. You can't drink enough alcohol to separate yourself from the love of God. You can't shoot up enough drugs to make God hate you. You can't stand out in the field and curse His name enough for Him to quit loving you. Oh, hallelujah. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God. It is accessible to you until the last breath leaves your body. Yeah. Amen. Come on. And even then, you won't get away from His love. But then it will be too late. Instead of a comfort, it will be more of a torment. All right. Because you'll remember the words of this preacher that you could have accepted God's love, but you're in a place of hell right. and torment because you rejected God's love. Us as humans should know all too well you can't make somebody love you. Even though you still love them. Right. Even though you'd give everything you got for them. You can't make them love you. God ain't going to make you love Him. Amen. He's given everything. Well, why don't God prove His love? Oh, Absolutely. He's already proved His love. Exactly. How much more can He do? How much more can He do? Nothing shall separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Someone else have something today before we...